This is Center Stage, putting your firm in the spotlight by highlighting business owners and other industry experts to help take your firm to the next level. Hey everyone, and welcome to Center Stage. I'm your host, John Henson. And this week, uh, we are talking about what it takes to keep your clients happy, which I know, and I'm sure you're very aware, uh, is just an ongoing struggle for many small firms out there. And so to tell us uh, how to go about doing that is someone who was actually one of the very first guests on Center Stage a couple of years ago. I can't believe it's been two years uh, since we've done this, but uh, it's Kristen David from Up Leveling Your Business. Kristen, thanks for joining us again. Thanks for having me again. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. So uh, if people out there, maybe they didn't see your episode the first time around, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. So I am an attorney by trade. I practiced for almost 15 years doing legal malpractice defense and medical malpractice defense, built my firm up to a multi-million dollar business and then sold it. And started working exclusively with lawyers for a number of years uh, in a coaching company. And then almost four years ago now, branched out on our own. And we actually work with all different business owners, helping them build systems so that the owner is not having to do everything anymore. And making sure that that team, building that culture and the, the, the core values, everyone's in alignment with what you're building. So yeah. having fun doing it. <laughs> yes. And and you being a practicing attorney, you know what it's like having to try to do everything and and how that goes or or doesn't go uh, a lot of the time. But I like I like that you mentioned core values because that's where I really wanted to start. And because I think that that's really where everything begins and, and, and that's how everything kind of grows outward from. And so for maybe people out there who either don't have core values established yet for their firm, or even for maybe people who may have established some, what, how do you, A, how do you figure out what your core values really are and how do you establish core values that really go beyond what might be, you know, quote unquote, pay for play sorts of values that, that most businesses kind of go with? So core values are, and we have them all around us. Personally, we all have kind of our personal mantras of how we live and, and, uh -huh. and how we do things, right? The way you do anything is the way you do everything. And you naturally just kind of build those up based on your belief systems and your growth. And, and that transfers into our business as business owners. When we create that business, we have this, this idea of what we want our business to be like, what, What's that, that, you know, that goal that we want to accomplish and, and listen, core values. It, it was actually one of the first, when I started this business up level in your business, it was one of the first courses I developed was build your culture masterclass. And then first, right there in the first couple of weeks, it was like how to build your core values. Cause it's such an integral part of who you are and what you stand for. So for some people, there's maybe two or three words they use. Some people they'll use like six or seven words or maybe build an acronym with it. For some people, it's phrases. Um, we want to be the best or do our best, right? Because it's hard to sometimes put that down into just one word, right? Right. So there is no perfect magical formula. Everyone's going to be a little different with what they're trying to convey. So I think my first comment would be core values are an evolution and don't get so caught up in trying to like fit somebody else's schematic and try to make it perfect. Make it just resonate with what you're trying to accomplish. So that'd be my first little biz nugget there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I think, you know, one thing is like, you know, your, your core values can change. Like you don't have to, like, this isn't a decision that you're going to carry with you for the next 20, 30 years or however long you yeah. own your business. Like I think us specifically, I think we're on our third iteration yeah. of our, of our core values. And you know, like a couple have like stayed with us uh, the entire time, but you know, I mean, four or five have changed every now and then, but one thing that I I, I want to challenge people on is is go beyond just like basic values, right? Like, don't I, I would say like unless there's like a really specific reason, like honesty and integrity, working hard, like those aren't really core values. Like everyone expects that, 
right? But again, it's but to me, and, and let me know what you think about this. It, like, if you're going to do that, like, there has to be a very specific reason, or or some unique kind of angle on that. But what should a core value really encompass, uh, encompass and, and how does it impact how it how you end up serving your clients? So I would say, think of it as four different bubbles, right? One bubble is to give alignment to the company to say, this is, this is our shining light. And then often mm -hmm. when we make decisions on marketing or different things, we say, does this meet our core values? Another bubble is to resonate with that and attract that ideal team member where they say, wow, they've been at a, 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 a cruddy place that didn't have honesty and integrity. And they're yeah. really searching for that firm. That's going to be that, that solid, true, honest, admit when you make mistakes. Right. So yeah. the, you really have a bubble where you're using the core value to attract the right people to say you're in the right place. Then you have that core, that bubble of, of your team. And this is how we do things. And I want to talk more about that, of how you incorporate that in your day-to-day -day procedures and workflows and all of that. Yes. Um, I think that's the special sauce. It's not just the written brand or the, you know, the, the panel on the wall, the framed, you know, poster. Um, yeah. And then the, the, for, the final bubble is your, your clients. Like people want to do business with people that are vibrant, fun, get it, understand, and are, are living in within that alignment. And so I think it's important to, if we're a very calm, relaxing, let's streamline and find the best way. You don't want a bunch of clients who are hell bent on fighting and constantly doing something different because it's it's going to clash every day with with what you're trying to develop. So it, you want to attract the right kind of client to tie in with what how you operate, what you want to do. So, yeah, four different bubbles that I think that really bring that together. Yeah. And I, lo I love that you talked about how it helps you attract the right client, because I think your core values do impact how you market your firm and the message that you're putting out there, because, you know, whatever the angle is, and, and we can hang on the honesty and integrity sort of thing, just because that's kind of the road we've gone down. But it's like, that's, that's what's going to influence how your messaging comes out. And, and that's, you know, kind of the, one of the staples of how you're going to make those connections with your clients. And I, and I really love that that's, that's the presentation that you made with it, but you did mention just, you know, the, the secret sauce of it all is around keeping it top of mind and, and really integrating it into the daily firm culture. So how do you do that? How, how do you, make it so that it's something that is really top of mind with, with your team and, and how they're performing day in and day out. Yeah. So I'm going to actually use one of ours because one of ours actually is integrity, but we always do a core word and then we use three descriptors and then a couple sentences to mm -hmm. really encompass and help share with our audience, our clients, our team, what we mean by this. So what we say for integrity is, it says integrity, honesty, trust, and work ethic. Uh -huh. We believe that everyone thrives by having a work ethic built with full trust and honesty so we can be at our best. Being open to feedback and dedicated to building and nurturing good systems can be extremely rewarding to the team and the company. So what we're really saying is we want to recognize that if we're honest with ourselves, sometimes we might've fallen short on a project and how can we be better next time? How can we do better next time? How can we make sure we're always aiming to be the best of the best, to really excelling at what we're doing and being open to that feedback with one another of like, how can we nurture and not just give feedback to a human, but like, how do we fix the system and the process and make it better for all the future generations that are going to use it? Um, yeah. so here's an example of using, I, I'm just going to jump right in, John. I, I love yeah. to drop these biz nuggets where they can use them. And this is pull out one of your workflow processes for how you do something. Maybe it's right in the first 30 days of working with a client. 
how can we be better, right? How can we increase, raise that level of excellence, raise that integrity of, of getting that good work ethic. So it's, you know, part of the procedure might be step one, the handling attorney shall have a strategic meeting with the client and review these elements and document it into the file. Step two, the handling attorney shall review the strategy with the evidence and then convey that strategy to the team so they understand what's going on. Step three, the handling attorney shall in writing convey, reconvey that strategy to the client to show how, you know, what, what the goal is of moving forward. So everyone's on the same path. We're all on, you know, the, there's honesty, there's clarity, you know, this is what we're working towards. And then maybe you add that step four. This is the special sauce, adding that core value. Step four, the legal team shall spend five minutes identifying how could we make this process better in the future? How, is there a way to improve the, the process? Is there a way to improve the strategic planning? Is there a way to improve our communications yeah. with our client in the first 30 days, right? Yeah. So if we literally... And, 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 and it could say in the step, this exemplifies our integrity with being at our best and always looking to nurture good systems to make it smoother in the future. So you're literally pulling words out of what we, what's our core value and yeah. using it in the procedure to remind the team to do it every day. Make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's really good. And, 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 you know, and I think to your point, um, a really great way, even even subconsciously, you know, if, even if the employees may not pick up on it immediately, like you're you're still doing very intentional and purposeful things to to really just kind of mesh it all together. Um, you know, I mean, one of ours, one of our core values, and and I know you'll appreciate this, is systems are life, where it's all about you know we we use systems we rely we rely on systems to to make sure that everything gets done gets done consistently and and you know to you know the highest standards that we have and one of the things i want to ask you about in in terms of that is you know one of the biggest areas that the legal industry especially is notorious for is just being really bad about keeping clients in the loop, staying in touch with people and you being a lawyer for, for many years, it's in your, in your opinion, like, is that a systems issue or is it just, is it something where it's almost like, you know, the lawyer might just think, well, there's not really anything I need to tell them. So I'm just going to ignore it. And I'll just get to them when I have something worth telling them, in my opinion, what it like, what is it that you've seen? And, and how do you come? How do you try to even begin to fix this sort of problem? Okay, I think there's like, three and four answers in what you said. But <laughs> so as a legal malpractice attorney, I definitely saw a trend where attorneys don't want to work on things that they're not getting paid for or that they undervalued their the pricing. So they're not really inspired to work on it or two, they don't really know what the hell they're doing. Yeah. And so they're scared to pick up the file and work on it. Right. This is where the more you have those workflows and processes clearly delineating, the more your team can step up and get things done. And the para or the assistant can call the client and say, Hey client, I just wanted to check in, let you know the legal team finished these two steps. Here are the next three things they're working on, right? With confidence, we can communicate that we're moving their case forward. And yeah. when no one knows what the heck's going on, it's really hard to communicate any kind of confidence. And so no one calls the client because they're scared and they don't know what's supposed to happen or when yeah. the attorney or anyone will get to it. So I do think that that was a huge trend in the legal malpractice stuff is you would see that spiral start happening where they weren't communicating with the client, then the client's getting a more and more angry and it just spirals out of control. And it, all it needed was just a little bit of touch. So coming back to, is it, is it, I think it's both a hospitality item. I think it's also a process item. And so one of the books that our UIB team read this year 
was Unreasonable Hospitality. Great book. Talks about really just nurturing that client experience, communicating, just really being human and, and really connecting with people. So I do think that there is a component of this where we do need to teach our team hospitality. We do need to teach customer service. Um, this is why like our client happiness coordinator understands the nine steps of handling a client complaint. And even clients that complain, we can turn them into raving fans with a clear process and acknowledge that there was a problem, investigate, and go back and suggest a solution that may not actually really touch on fixing, but just shares with the person, hey, we recognize things didn't go as smoothly as they could have, but we want to move you forward. How about A or B? And it, it might not have anything to do with the past problem. It might just be a bonus extra acknowledging, hey, it wasn't a smooth practice. So, so I think that hospitality and just that client care is definitely an element in here. Mm -hmm. And then I'll go to my third answer because you yeah. jam-packed me up with this. <laughs> the third part of this answer is process. Um, yeah. So with, listen, if your core value is um, systems or customer experience or customer service, right? Let's add it in so that you take your workflow from A to Z and let's add in six additional touches throughout your workflow where we're going to communicate with the client. Now, mm -hmm. it doesn't all have to be physical. One can just be an automated email sequence that goes out as soon as the client sends you some items, whatever they are, it's an acknowledgement email. It can be yeah. a template that'll take an assistant 20 seconds to do and send back. Hey, th it could be like the autocorrect language that pops in and says, hey, thank you so much for sending this over. Greatly appreciated. We're getting this to the legal team. They'll be taking a look. You're just acknowledging but that little customer care means the whole world to your client who, rather than it getting sent to deep hole, an abyss that they have no idea, did it ever get received? They're acknowledged, they're affirmed that yes, they're in the right place. This is the right team and they're being taken care of. So yeah. that's just, again, back to those policies and procedures. Let's have that step five. And after the client or step 2.4 or whatever it is, after client sends items back, autoresponder email needs to go out, assistant to confirm, you know, acknowledging receipt. It might also be after um, a deposition or after a, a key meeting or something. We just add that extra step and the paralegal shall call the client and convey what happened at this key meeting or the handling attorney does it or the assistant does it right? It's the who shall do what by when. And we build that in. And, and then we add a parenthesis into the procedure that says we do this because this is in alignment with customer service and giving our clients an amazing experience of knowing that we've got their back and we're taking care of them and moving their case forward. So we remind yeah. the team how to give that great customer service. Yeah. And, and the other thing that, that you got to keep in mind is like your clients have no idea what's like what the actual process looks like. Right. Like you're 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 a lawyer. You're doing this every day. Of course, you know what's going on. You know what's what's like. your clients have never been through this before. They have no idea what's going on. They don't know if they've even sent you the right documents or everything that you need. Right. I mean, like, I'll give you a great example. Uh, I, I got a, a traffic violation in a different town and it was like a weird intersection. I had no idea what it was. It was something I'd never seen before, but a police officer felt that I did something incorrectly. And so he wrote me a ticket for it and hired, I hired a lawyer to get it fixed. Cause like I couldn't travel. Like this was a town two hours away. Like I wasn't going to be able to drive two and a half hours for a court appearance, told them to take care of it. I never heard from them. I like, I had to follow up with them and just like, Hey, is everything fine? And it was like, yeah, we had to push your court date back. Okay, cool. Wait another six weeks. Hey, what's going on? Yeah. We had to push your court date back again. It's fine. The court date then came and went 
I still didn't hear anything from him again. And so now it's like, I've got to reach out to him. It's like, Hey, if I am passing through this town, am I going to get arrested because I failed to appear or anything? Yeah. And because like, I have no idea what the process looks like, you know, and which is, you know, maybe bad to admit on this show, knowing that I work for the, you know, help the legal industry. And like, I understand the terminology and like, I understand what lawyers do broadly speaking, but when it comes to the finer details, the day-to-day -day operations, the actual procedural stuff, if I don't know it, your regular clients definitely aren't going to know it. And, and so it's just taking, you know, it's that little bit of empathy and being able to put yourself in their shoes to really understand how best to serve them. Yeah. And, and this is why we talk about in our coaching programs, in our workflows and workloads bootcamp, like get, build out the workflow from, you know, Phase one to phase seven. Phase one is is the the intake and opening, and and then it goes to opening the file, and then your biggest phases are doing the legal work in the legal field, right? And but then also just the the wrapping up the case and that final marketing of mate turning the person into a VIP raving fan, right? Yeah. That's from A to Z the workflow, and and giving the client, hey, can, you know, like marketing can put a pretty spin. Hey, you're here at the consultation. In six more phases, we're going to have you here, case completed, live happily ever after. And so all the clients need to hear is like, hey, congratulations, you just moved from phase two to phase three. Hey, you're you're now at halfway through phase four. It's going to be another four weeks and we should be at phase, like give the client some semblance of like, where am I in the spectrum? It's like Domino's delivery, right? Your pizza's yeah. in the oven being yeah. baked. Your pizza is now out for delivery. Like people in today's day and age want to know where they are. So having that workflow gets your team in alignment with what the steps are, your client in alignment with understanding the process. Everyone's yeah. talking the same language. So there's less communication errors. So yes, I mean, I think, and that's part of your core values. Your core values is to create this productive teamwork you know, where everyone is, is in sync and flowing to be able to give the client the end product they want, right. Whatever that is. So, um, yeah, I, I'm sorry you had that experience with your <laughs> traffic citation, but it happens all the time and it just yeah. frustrates the heck out of me because it, it could have been solved with even a visual handout, a PDF that would have said, Hey, here's the process. So you'd yeah. be like, Oh, okay. <laughs> right. And, and honestly, like even just me as a consumer, you know, especially we talk about marketing and, and staying in touch and, you know, even after, you know, a client has gone through the process and they're technically a past client now, it's like, you know, that, that law firm has not kept in touch with me at all. I haven't heard from them once since they sent me the email saying, yeah, everything's resolved. You're good. It's, it's like, you you keep in touch with me you keep me apprised of what's going on during the process even if i even if i never hear from you again being able to look back on that experience and be like yes that was an amazing experience i like i may have to take a few minutes to search through my emails to find the name of the firm that i worked with but give me a minute cuz i highly recommend them because they yeah. made it a really good experience but you're not doing that. And so who knows what kind of future referrals and business you're losing out on? Yeah. Well, and that's exactly why we, we want to wow our clients all the way through. And, you know, you, you want to set the right expectations at the front end. We don't want to over promise and under deliver, right? Cause right. that's not, that's not good. And you also don't want to like over deliver where they become so expectant that they underpay you and you're, you're, feeling like you're working for free. So it's, it definitely is something that teams have to work together. And as, as a team grows, you might be able to offer more like the client happiness coordinator or a client liaison or a, a strategist that's going to help the client, you know, okay, we're halfway done with your case, but once we finish your case, now you need to do, be ready for these next five steps here, let our client liaison work with you. So you have a game plan once we're done with the legal. It might be a 10 minute phone call in a workbook, but it could mean the world to your client and, and really create that raving fan who's like, wow, not only did they help me, they went above and beyond and showed me what are the next things I need to do. So, yeah. you know, just that little planning and that little element, but listen, when you're one to three people, one to five people on your team, maybe you don't have the bandwidth to do all of that yet. 
That's yeah. the beauty of growing yes. <laughs> and automation. <laughs> yes, exactly. So you talked about the, you've mentioned the client happiness coordinator a couple of times. Is that a full-time role in a law firm? Like what kinds of things could they do to like, to fill, you know, depending on how many clients a law firm is going through, like what sorts of things would a client happiness coordinator do? So I tend to tell people that it starts off as maybe five hours a week. It's, it's all those things that as owner, you wish you had time to get back to, but you don't. And mm. unfortunately it falls down the priority level and you, you keep meaning to just touch base with that client. Hey, how are you doing? It's been a couple of weeks since we finished up. Are you okay? Did you have any questions? Right. Or right at the beginning as they're getting into their case, Hey, I know you onboarded, but any questions, anything going on? How are we doing? anything more we can help you with. It's that extra TLC, that extra level of care and acknowledgement to show the client that they're a human. They're not just a, a widget that we're pushing through a factory, right? Yeah. And so in the beginning, it might be five hours a week, and then that might build to 10 and then 15 and 20. And as you really grow your business, it might really blossom. There's also a the client happiness coordinator task could be held by more than one human. Your receptionist could do three hours a week by sending out little cards, thank yous, hey, hope you feel better, get well soon. So excited to hear that your grandson graduated from college, whatever it might be, the, the team, the legal team, the admin team, the financial team, Every week should be able to pop over and say, hey, can you send a card to so-and-so? Their cat died. Hey, can you send a whatever to just acknowledge that they got celebrated by the local chamber of commerce, whatever it is, right? And so now that could be a standalone client happiness coordinator or an external part-time contractor, or it could be your receptionist, right? Or maybe it's just your legal assistant who loves to they know all the clients and they love that part, right? So mm. don't we don't have to get so stuck on like which human does it. Find the one that does thrives on doing it. The next part might be sending gifts. Now it could be a welcome gift, kind of a shock and awe, a thank you for joining our team. It could be like something that's really on brand or it could be very meaningful little things. Maybe Maybe the receptionist was at the front desk when the person came in and they had a conversation about cough drops and mm -hmm. they say, oh, I really love these one cough drops, but they're hard to find. So maybe the receptionist sends them a bag of their favorite cough drops and says, you know, just wanted to let you or send you, you know, I was able to find these, wanted to send them over, hope you have a fabulous month. Don't hesitate to reach out if there's anything else we can do for you right? Like yeah, that kind of TLC is more memorable. It might've been a five ninety nine, you know, a $6 bag of, of cough drops, but it's in the thoughtfulness, right? Yeah. It's that hospitality part. So I think that there's definite tasks like that, that could be in-house. It could be just a standalone person. You can use a branding company to do swag if you want. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it, it, it just, that, that ties in with your core values, who you are, your mission, your brand, what you're trying to really, are you a niche company, you know, very boutique? Are you, are, you know, sort of a, like a traffic citation factory, you know I mean? Yeah. High volume, low price. Like this is part of this business strategy that you do to say, what, what do we want to be known for? And, and what does our budget allow is a big part of it as well. Um, yeah. so, so yes, couple, couple final things on other tasks, the client happiness coordinator can, can manage, but also could be other humans on the team, uh, that just were part of that cap calling clients, reaching out, checking in on them, getting updated information like emails, phone numbers, cell phone, um, you know, just because calls having a script having a good joyful voice, right? That's what's important. And that can make all the difference because at that dinner party, and you've probably been there once, John, of, of like a dinner party where someone's bitching about something, like my attorney won't call me back. And then here's somebody that pipes up and is like, wow, well, my attorney marketing company, fill in the blank, 
you know, right. they just called me the other day just to check in on me, just to tell me, you know, like make sure I, I was being taken care of. And everybody at the table is like, oh, I want that service. Like I want right. that person, right? This is where your marketing is happening without you even in the room. <laughs> this is yep. great. <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. So those are some tasks. I mean, gifting cards, phone calls. We also have to be ready for if it's a raving fan, how to take down the testimonials. If it's a not so happy fan client, how to deal with those client complaints, right? Yeah. Those are all part and parcel to reaching out to clients and, and connecting with them and solving problems. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think kind of wrapping all of this together and, and the reason and the way to make it all work is to make sure that everything is systematized and documented. Yeah. And, you know, we uh, like, you didn't ask me to say this, I'm just giving a free testimonial here, like we have actually used uh, Kristen's service to help rewrite our manuals and our policies and procedures and our own systems and, and make them more clear, more organized. And it's and it's a really great process that, that you have going on. So let people know just about the ways that you help uh, firms and businesses and how they can learn more. Thank you, John. And thank you for those kind words. Because yes, I love helping people get organized. So um, we have kind of three parts to it. There's one is for those that need that one-on-one -on -one help and maybe how do we or reorganize or restructure. There's the coaching component. Some people just know they need the marketing systems manual. They, they finally need to get the sales systems manual done or the financial systems manual. You could go to the website, uplevelingyourbusinesssystems.com and get on and purchase those or and you get an implementation call. And then sometimes you just need it for one hire. Like you just need to hire, like the, we were just talking about the client happiness coordinator. So yeah. we've got a package, how to hire on board and work with a client happiness coordinator. And it comes with a 50 page policy and procedure manual, training that person up of how to do these tasks, scripts, templates, um, spreadsheets, like all the tools they're going to need to Excel quickly and videos to watch so they can see for the visual learners and read for the readers. And, and so these are the tools that we love. Like sometimes people just need one thing. Like I want to bring in a billing clerk or I want to bring in a marketing assistant, right? They can just get that one package. And what we find is they love it. And they, that person becomes hugely profitable very quickly because they're doing their job and they have the clear system to follow. And then they come back and they go, okay, we're ready for the next one. We want to work on this part or this part. And so, you know, everybody is in a different place with their business. So our biggest thing is jump on a phone call with us. Let's triage. What do they really need first? Mm -hmm. And, and let's get that, solve that. And that claws back 30, 40 minutes of their time every week. And yep. then that makes space to work on the next one. And so Systems and implementation, those are <laughs> two key elements. Um, but I love seeing the results and that's what drives this whole team is we love hearing the success people have with building those systems. Absolutely. And, and you know, the kind of the, the way that I, I uh, make it make sense for me is like, if it, it's morbid, but it's kind of the running joke that we've always had around here where like, if you as the business owner go out and get hit by a bus, who can come in and keep things running in your absence if you don't have everything systematized and documented. And, and so it really is uh, a very important part. And I know that we asked this question on our trends report, just as like some extra information, how many people have their systems and process. And I know between uh, 2021 and 2022, the, the number of firms that have everything documented is, is growing and, and getting higher. So that's really good. But if you're out there and you still have things that are missing, uh, really do recommend you, you have those documented, uh, Kristen, this has been great. I have one last question for you before we wrap up. And that is, if you had one final piece of advice for our audience, what would it be? Always be evolving your systems and let your team evolve those systems with you and, and for your, your company and for themselves. Um, we encourage everybody to, every person on the team to take vacation time every quarter because it gives us a chance to see what's broken. Like if somebody else can slide in and do it easily or did something be a little clunky and then they have a chance to innovate and make the process better, 
And partially it's because, you know, the roles are evolving and we're growing and building. And so I think that the final nugget for the audience would be know that you're always evolving and your business is going to change. Your needs might change. You might've been bigger and you decide to be smaller because you just want your time back. And so your systems might tweak a little bit to, to automate more and work towards that. And so be okay with the fact it's not just a build it once and it's forever done, but you also want to incorporate the team in this process, not just on one human. Yes. Uh, yeah. Like the nothing, I don't think anything is ever permanently set in stone when it comes to stuff like this. Like it's always going to change, you know, you're always looking for, for different things to, to improve on and tweak and, and, and test out. And so uh, really love that. Really appreciate that. Thank you all for continuing to listen. Please leave a rating and review if you have not done so yet. Uh, it does help the show get us out in front of more people so they can hear uh, the nice things that Kristen has to say and, and help everybody and help more people grow their firms uh, at Loud Wells. Don't, don't just hoard it all for yourself, all right? Share the love. Uh, but that's it. That's going to do it for us this week. Thanks so much, Kristen. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, John. Thanks for listening. To learn more, go to spotlightbranding.com slash center stage.